I'm John, and I'll be talking about um, efficient arithmetics. Um, it's, a not, it's a fancy word for a quick math, but it, it's a topic that I um, studied in uh, college, and it's, very, it's a very interesting topic to me, and I, just, and I wanted to share it here. Um, but just to get started, um, first, like, what's, what are the definitions of an arithmetic? And according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it says it's a branch of math that just deals with numbers. And, and you know, in a more, I guess, a layman sense, it's just like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, division, exponentation, and like uh, extraction degrees. But in this, le uh, in this lecture, I'll be focusing on addition and multiplication um, in Pacific. Um, Anything you see here that I talk about addition, just flip the uh, signs from a plus to a minus and it becomes subtraction. And for multiplication and division, it's the same thing. Just take the inverse and it, it can be applied the same way. Um, exponent, exponentation and extraction of roots, this um, goes into a lot of complex details. So I did not include it in my lecture, but um, later, later on, um, in the slides, I'll tell you um, some resources where you can um, go learn more about uh, these parts. But yeah, um, so this is what arithmetics were. And to get um, started, so it's time to define like what efficient arithmetics are. And we know that arithmetics are adding and you know multiplying in the context of our seminar. But what is efficient ar arithmetics? So, um, you know, this music video was kind of famous uh, back in 2017. Um, Big Shaft kind of defined quick maths and it became very popular. But quick math was actually a, a, a long standing uh, question since like, since like the invent of numbers, like people just wanted to do math pretty quick. Um, and it's not just two plus two is four. Uh, minus one equals three, but like bigger numbers. Um, so yeah, in a sense, it's basically quick math, but it, the, the bigger question is how can we do arithmetic computations faster? And um, there's two ways. The first method is to have like faster computing material. Um, so if we go back into history a little bit, then, you know, people started using fingers to count uh, and fingers to add things, or I guess multiplication didn't really exist back then it was just repeated addition but yeah people use fingers to um count and but then you know we only have 10 fingers um and usually the numbers we deal with there are numbers that are greater than 10 so you know people started to improve upon this and they started um using uh different number systems that they had um within their uh, respective countries. Um, I just brought a, a example of the tally mark, which is I guess, one of the more common ones that we use nowadays. Um, but yeah, people started writing, writing them down. Um, and addition, it, addition back then was just like, just adding more tally marks if they use tally marks. And um, yeah, and, and then people evolved to a, ba a Baskis's. Um, I don't know how to use them, but apparently the, uh, my friends who know how to use them, um, they can do things pretty quickly uh, with the back, a back. <laughs> and then nowadays we have computers um, or I guess computational machines. And these are said to be around like 10 million times faster than the human finger. So adding numbers, um, it's around 10 million times faster. I'm guessing that this number is kind of in a very general sense. Um, and like the number of times faster than the human finger will obviously go up as uh, the numbers that you're trying to add or multiply go up as well. But yeah, so that was the first method. So we can have faster computing materials. Um, so, this, so this is like kind of related to technology, but the second method is faster computing techniques. And faster computing techniques is uh, today's focus and what I'll be focusing on on this on this seminar. Um, and when I say faster computing techniques, I mean faster computing algorithms as, and algorithms as in like 
how can we add numbers in a quicker way? And how can we multiply numbers in a quicker way? You'll be surprised to know that um, they're actually, people still haven't found the fastest practical way to multiply numbers, like until now, uh, even though researchers have been trying to do this for a while. Uh, but I'll elaborate on this later on. But yeah, um, so first we have addition. I'll, I'll start with addition and then go on to multiplication. But addition, so assume that we have two numbers um, uh, and we're trying to add them together. Uh, one number has n digits and one number has m digits. And let's just assume that m uh, is larger than n. So the second number is just larger than uh, the first number. Uh, it can be the same, um, it can be otherwise, but this is just one example. Um, and the first way to add things is the intuitive method is to just start moving numbers to one side. Um, this is what I, this is what I mean by finger counting. So if you have like uh, four and three, you can start, you know, moving one here, uh, removing one, and now you have seven. Um, but yes, but this is kind of terrible. It's not really efficient. Um, the number of operations that you need to do is, um, let's say you're moving the smaller number to the larger number, then you have to do 10 to the power of n finger movements. And this is kind of tiring, especially if n is um, a large number. So this is very inefficient. And the second method is um, the carry method. And what I mean by the carry method, I'll be uh, illustrating uh, by drawing here. But carry method is, for example, if we have, an, if we have um, two numbers, uh, let me just think of a rent. OK, so, so if we have two numbers, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, the carry method is basically the math that we all learned um, in elementary school. Oh, oops, sorry. And the carry method is we evaluate the same uh, digit places together uh, and we put two and then we carry this over. That's why it's called a carry method. And then we evaluate these together at one, uh, carry it over uh, nine and then six. Yes, yeah, it's uh, so the answer is 6,912. 6, um, and let's try to see like how many operations we needed in the carry method. Um, so we evaluated the single digit numbers together. So that's one. Um, and then we evaluated the tens digit numbers together. So that's, uh, that's two. And then uh, we evaluated the hundred digits numbers together. So that's three. And then we evaluated the, uh, the thousands uh, digit number together. So that's uh, four. So we needed a total of four operations to add two, digit, two numbers with four digits. So as we can see, um, as expected, oops, the number of operations that we need is proportional to n, which is a huge improvement, right? Just because we went from 10 to the power of n to n. And this is kind of um, big because let's say, for example, the, um, you know, you're trying to add um, just two large numbers together. Um, let's say n is like around, I guess the real world number that is large is probably like in the billion. So if n is like 10, then we would have to do from a billion uh, computations, we go to 10, just using the carry method. Um, and yeah, so this is a great improvement. And it is, and, and yeah, so since the carry method was such a good, great improvement from um, the normal finger counting method, uh, it's time to uh, think more about how we can make addition like even more efficient than this. So people thought, is there a better method? Um, and then they quickly came to realize that, no, there is no better method um, than uh, having the number of operations proportional to n. Just because we would have to look at every digit to add numbers together. Um, so if it's not really proportional to n, then, then that means that we're not looking at every digit when we're um, um, adding two numbers together. And 
you know, that's not good. Like we're, we're never going to get a correct result. Um, we don't look at it every digit. So for addition, uh, proportional to n is the best method, the carry method. So um, as I move on to the multiplication stage, um, I will be, um, just because multiplication uh, also uses addition um, in their computational methods, I'll be um, saying that anything that involves adding in the multiplication stage uh, is proportional to n. But yeah, um, let's go into um, the multiplication. Oh, and oh, sorry, I forgot. I forgot to mention. Um, and when I say proportional to n, you may have noticed that I always said like the number of operations is proportional to n. The reason why I said that it's not just n is because it's actually n times um, the time to add two digits together. Um, and the time to add two digits together um, is what I talked about, um, faster computational machines. So uh, when I calculated it, maybe it took like two seconds to add two digits together. But for the computer, it might take uh, like one millisecond or probably even less. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's the computational resources team. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, decrease the red part, the end part. Okay, so, so yeah, multiplication. So, so first, you know, um, our intuitive thoughts that come into mind when we talk about multiplication is that multiplication is basically repeated addition. Um, I believe that's what the literal definition is. Um, and so the first method that comes into mind is repeated adding. And repeating, repeated adding is if we have like two numbers with n and m digits, um, let's say x um, is a 10 digit number, um, 10 to the power of n plus like something. Uh, and then y is uh, 10 to the power of m plus uh, something. I'm just going to write something as squiggly lines, all the other significant digits other than the leftmost one. But, but yeah, so if we have x and y, then if we want to evaluate x times y, um, then we would have to do x plus x plus x plus x dot 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 plus x. And then we would have to do this y times. Um, and as we can see, this is terribly inefficient as well. Uh, and the number of operations is proportional to n times uh, 10 to the power of n. Uh, if we go back here, x times y uh, was equal to um, x, adding x y times. And because we know that addition takes, um, is proportional to the number of digits when we add these two together, then um, every addition cost is n, and then we're doing that y times. And because n y is equal to 10 to the power of m, so the number of operations that we need to do is uh, proportional to n times 10 to the power of n. Um, there actually is a hint, uh, a secret um, where, you know, if we add uh, these numbers together, the number of digits will start to increase. Um, say, for example, if x was 5,000, um, if, we, if we add two x's together, we added four digit numbers together. Um, but then, you, you know, from, from here onwards, it's five digits um, and things get worse. But the main point is that um, this method is really bad and is inefficient. So uh, people wanted to find better ways to multiply things. And so the second method is breakdown multiplication. And what I mean by breakdown multiplication is that, so say for example, we have two numbers, uh, one 123 times uh, 450, um, actually let's do 456. Um, then how we can do this is we can evaluate this by doing 123 times four um, plus, 123 times 5 plus 123 times 6. And then just because the 4 was from the hundredth digit, we're going to multiply 100 here. 
and then multiply uh, uh, 10 here, just because this was from the 10th digit, and uh, six here, just because uh, one here, just because it's from the one digit. And for 100, 10, and one, we're not really going to care about um, uh, the multiplication cost, just because we can just add, uh, you know, the number of zeros behind this. And let's look at how many operations we need for this kind of um, uh, multiplication method. So we evaluate a number with digit n every time uh, to each digit of m, right? So because we're multi, so this can be seen as doing uh, n times a single digit number um, times m times. Uh, so n times a single digit number, m times. So this can be uh, written as n times m. So the number of operations we need is n times m for uh, multiplication, uh, for this kind of method. Um, this is probably the method that we all use in order to do uh, mental math for slightly larger numbers. Um, but this is also still very inefficient and we want to do better. Um, and so now I introduce, um, I guess, more of the, more of the, I guess, fresh and new unique ideas proposed by mathematicians and uh, computer scientists. And the third method is divide and conquer. Uh, this, is, this is mostly called the Kuratsuba multiplication and the technique that it uses is divide and conquer. Uh, so let's see. So assume that um, the slides change because I need to do some a lot of writing here. But assume that we want to find the value of x times y, where x is 2021 and y is 725. Um, as you can see, these are the dates of today. I just used um, these numbers. But uh, a Kuratsuba multiplication, uh, before I go into the actual Kuratsuba multiplication, uh, let me demonstrate how divide and conquer kind of looks in multiplication and what divide and conquer is. Divide and conquer is um, generally a term in order to break things down, break a process down, and then complete smaller processes in order to complete a bigger uh, process. And how we can use um, um, uh, divide and conquer here is that we can recall this kind of equation. So A, um, plus b uh, squared is equal to 2a squared. Oh, whoops, sorry. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Um, and, you know, if we do a plus b, c plus d, then this is equal to AC plus AD plus BC plus BD. So we're going to use this uh, property um, of polynomials um, and use it to divide and conquer multiplication. So let's see. Um, so if we have 2021, we can write 2021 as, let me actually clear all the drawings here just because I won't be using them. Uh, but 2021 can be written as 20 times um, 100 plus 21. And 725, we're just going to put a zero here um, in order for it to work nicely um, with the x. So we're just kind of um, padding the left side so that it has the same number of digits as um, the other number. And here, this is equal to 0, 07 times 100 plus 25. Um, to put it in like a more mathematical sense, if we have, uh, let's say, for example, x is equal to a number that has a, b, c, d, D as, as it's like a uh, number. Um, then what we're doing here is that we're kind of dividing it into um, X left, 
an x right and so we're 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 modeling uh x as x left times 10 to the power of uh, the number of digits over two um, plus x right and this is what i'm doing um, here and so if we had uh, this in structure uh, then x times y can be written as uh, 20 uh, times 10 to the power of 2 plus 21 multiplied by 7. I'm just going to keep the padding here just because um, it is useful later on. Um, times 10 to the power of 2 plus 25. And, uh, and then recall the polynomial uh, expansion um, that we saw, but we're, we're going to do this one with this one, and then this one with this one, and then uh, this one with this one, and this one with this one. Um, so what we're going to get is uh, 20 times 0, 07 times 10 to the power of 4 plus um, 20 times 25 times 10 to the power of 2 plus um, 0, 07 times 21 times 10 to the power of 2. Notice that I just moved the 10 to the power move 10 to the power of 2 to backwards instead of like doing 20 times 10 to the power of 2 times 25 just because it it looks easier um, to read um, plus uh, 25 times 21 and when we group these together um, we notice that um, because because in this case uh, 20 was x left this was x right this was this was a uh, y left, and this was y right. We can notice that um, this equation that we see here can be transformed into, uh, let's see, x left. Oops. Let me not use colors. Um, x left um, times uh, 07, that's y left times because four was the number of digits uh, the number of digits for both x and y then we can have 10 to the power of n right and then we have plus actually let me do the pluses in different color so plus uh, and then we got 20 which is x left times this is y right plus uh, so seven is y left times uh, x right times 10 to the power of n over two. And then plus um, this, this is uh, x to the x right times y right. So we can see that um, this multiplication formula can be um, divided into two parts and then written as an equation here. And let's try to um, evaluate the number of operations that we need if we use this method. Um, so the number of operations that we need is x left, y left. Oh, uh, and keep in, mind, keep in mind like all these variables like x left, y left, uh, y right, uh, x right. These all have the number, these have n over two number of digits just because we quite literally just divided um, x and y to, uh, in half. But yeah, so this is multiplying um, n, an n over two digit with an n over two digit. Um, and this is just n digits. So this is, so the first part would be, um, so this would, this part would be n squared over 4 um, yeah n squared over 4 
Um, and then this part would be the same, n squared over four. And then this part would also be n squared over four. So, um, so the number of operations that we need, uh, uh, and notice that I didn't count um, this into the, um, into the uh, actual equation just because um, this can be replaced by just adding zeros, just because we already know that it's going to be displaced by that much um, zeros. Oh, actually, sorry, this is a mistake. This is n squared over four, and this is another n squared over four, uh, my bad. So the total number of operations become n squared over four times four, which is n squared. Is everyone with me so far? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know um, through the chat or, um, or, oh, oops, sorry, through the chat or um, anything. But okay, I'm guessing everyone's uh, with me here. Um, I'll be clearing my screen, um, but but yeah. So this is the divide and conquer method for. This is how to like divide and conquer for uh, multiplication. And we see that using this method, we have um, n, n squared operations needed. But you might notice that, um, oops, so this is n, n squared or, or n times m. Um, I did n squared just because we padded uh, y to an extra digit. But notice that this is the same um, you know, number of operations that we needed from the breakdown multiplication to this one. So people weren't satisfied. You know, This seems like a pretty cool idea, um, but the number of operations that we need for divide and conquer is the same as uh, the breakdown multiplication. Um, and so people thought, you know, how can we make this better? And they soon realized that there is hope and that's what uh, Karatsuba uh, uh, defined. And basically what we can do instead is that recall that um, so x x left times y left um, times 10 to the power of n plus blah 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 uh, we, we we had like all the other coefficients there but how about how about this idea um, when we have Xl, XL is a two digit number here, right? So for example, XL here is 20 and Y left is uh, 0, 07 from, from this, uh, the left side of X and the left side of Y. How about we divide this even further and do kind of like a recursive statement where XL, hmm, how should I define this? X LL is equal to two, the left part of XL, and XLR is equal to the right side of the left of X, which is equal to zero. Then what we can do is we can kind of write the equation in this sense. So when we divided, so so originally we just wanted to multiply 20 and 0, 07 together and then add that with um, add that with the values where we multiply things here. Um, but instead what we're going to do is that we're going to keep splitting um, things up. Um, yes, uh, we're going to keep splitting things up. And then the number of operations that you need when you split things things up in this sense is that, um, okay, maybe I should uh, elaborate a little more on this, but um, okay, sorry. Okay, um, so, so, when we say Karatsuba multiplication, that means that we're going to, um, so if, if the answer that we wanted was 
um, uh, Kratsuba multiplication. I'm going to write it as KMOL, uh, KMOL 2021 And This can be written as another, um, as kind of like a children uh, recursive statement. Uh, so you can do a Kratsuba multiplication between 20 and 07 and Kratsuba multiplication between 20 plus 21, 07 plus 25, uh, 21 plus 25. Um, and the actual calculator results for this 2021 times 0725 should be uh, this number right here, a million and four hundred and sixty-five thousand two hundred and twenty-five. Um, oh, um, times uh, ten to the power of n times ten to the power of n over two. Okay. And yeah, let's try evaluating this um, like manually. I mean, uh, I mean, we can use the calculator, but um, let's try to do this manually and let's see if we can get this result. So if we multiply a Kratsuba multiplication on 20 and 07 again, then we have 140. And then we do 140 times 10 to the power of four, this, and then uh, 20 plus 21 is 41. 07 plus 25 is uh, 32. 41 times 32 is, all right, um, 2, 8, 4, 1, 492. It's 492 times um, 10 to the power of n over 2. But since n was 4, then this would be 100. Uh, and plus 21 times 25. Uh, 21 times 25 is, I believe, 6, no, not 600, 525. Yes. And so if we add these up, uh, then it becomes 1, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 4, 9, 2. And then 525. And this gives us, um, well, I think there was a calculation mistake. I'm sorry. But um, I might have misplaced the number somewhere, but um, this uh, actually evaluated to um, the same number when I uh, did the demo run. But, um, it is possible to divide um, these multiplications um, up into three into three parts, and that's what Kartsuba uh, proposed. Um, I'll, I'll try to redo this um, if we have time um, near the end of the lecture. Sorry about the mistake. Um, but yeah, so this is what Kartsuba did, and as we can see here. Um, so in order to multiply two numbers, we do uh, three operations, as we can see here. We do three operations with half the size of digits. Um, and when we do it with the half, half the size of digits, then, and then we do plus n, um, just because we just go through each digit and uh, divide them up. Um, so the total number of operations is equal to three times um, the oper, so three operations for uh, half, half digit size numbers plus the number of digits. And this becomes like an infinite series. Um, and the sum of that is, um, I won't be covering uh, the details of like how to sum these series, but this um, becomes n to the power of, n to the power of log base two of three. And since log base two of three is equal to 1.58, um, 1 1.58, um, this is much less than two. Um, and the reason why two is important is because uh, this is n, because the, our previous methods were n over two, um, but now it's n to the power of 1.58. So Kartsuba's method of breaking things down and doing things have decreased the number 
from n over two to n, uh, n to the power of 1.58. But you'll see that there are even more techniques. Uh, things get even faster and faster. And so let's go. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to do a quick MIT seminar recap. Um, and we talked about addition. Uh, the carry method was the most efficient. Um, we see that the, the, the number of operations needed to uh, add two numbers together is proportional to n, uh, where n is the number of digits. And the, and the number of operations needed for multiplication. Um, until now, the one I, until the method that I talked about now is the Karatsuba multiplication. And this makes it so that the number of operations that you need is uh, proportional to n to the power of 1.58. Um, but, you know, so people started wondering, can we do even faster? Um, because Karatsuba multiplication was a technique, uh, I believe it was founded, uh, uh, published in 1960. Uh, there's, there have been a lot of improvements since then. And yes, we can. So in 1960, Karatsuba proposed the n to the power 58 method. And um, as history goes, these are some of the, I guess, big and most com most well-known um, um, papers that reduce the computational um, intensity of multiplication. But as you can see, like the numbers don't go down too much. Um, and this, this is kind of um, a modern, modern uh, algorithm efficiency research. But um, yeah, as, as we go on, like uh, later on, like you'll see for like matrix multiplication, um, I think the current best number is like uh, n to the power of 2.376. But um, there was a breakthrough when uh, someone created a, a a matrix multiplication like uh, algorithm that uses three, seven, four. Um, so like it decreases very slightly year by year, but the fact that it's decreasing is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, for just for normal multiplication. Um, so this is the history of it. And as, and we talked about Karatsuba, um, which took n to the power of um, 1.58 and Toom and Cook also had another algorithm their algorithm was n to the power of 1.46. Um, this actually just improved a little bit more upon the Karatsuba method. Um, instead of dividing it into three uh, parts using polynomials, they found another polynomial equation that where they can break it up into five parts. But then within the five parts, the parts were even smaller. So, um, so it resulted in a smaller um, number here. And then the three uh, achievements here um, are related to fast Fourier transform. They don't really use the methods. Fast Fourier transform is another um, variation of a divide and conquer method, but I won't be talking, I won't be explaining this in detail in this seminar um, as, as it is a little too complicated, um, but uh, some of these topics uh, some of these algorithms use fast Fourier transform. So if you're interested um, in learning more about like how people created different um, ideas to multiply numbers faster, um, then you can probably take a look at a fast Fourier transform um, to understand like what they did here. And yeah, and in 2019, um, there was a, I guess, a, a headline where, um, you know, mathematicians found the most optimal way to multiply numbers. And it is believed that um, n log n is the best method currently, uh, the best method um, um, that can ever exist um, by mathematicians. But it, is, but it is only practical for very large numbers just because remember that when we talk about the number of computations, in theory, in from our side, we only, from our side as in like the algorithm creating uh, people, we only talk about like the number of uh, operations are proportional to like this this value here. But then this value has to be actually multiplied by a constant that I'm going to say c, which um, does the computation. Um, but c is 
for this algorithm, it's very weird. Um, it actually is very um, high. So if, if it's not for very large numbers, we're better off just like using this algorithm instead. Um, just because even though we have a 32 factor here, the, the constant, let me, let's say K, K is, um, K, okay, so the, the, the very weird thing is the constants actually vary between numbers. It, you, some, some, there are some lucky numbers where it gets faster and there are some numbers where it gets um, larger. Uh, so yeah, it, yeah, if you're interested, you might want to take a read into this. And so the quest continues. People are, are still trying to um, research faster ways to multiply um, things, uh, multiply two numbers together and you know, potentially make this uh, n log n algorithm uh, practical for even small numbers. And yeah, so just to, I guess, show you how these advancements are, are good. Um, so say, for example, like we say we want to like multiply two numbers that are around the size of 10 to the power of 100. This is a very large number actually, um, but this is definitely possible within like combinatorics. And so if we use the orig original multiplication tool, um, the breakdown uh, multiplication, uh, that took n squared time, then this would take 10,000 operations. However, with um, today's uh, multiplication techniques, we only have to do 200 op operations in order to um, multiply two numbers. So this made it the advancement 50 times faster. And, um, and say, for example, the number we want to multiply is 10 to the power of a billion. Then if we have a 10 to the power of a billion, then with our n squared uh, multiplication tactics, the original one that we talked about, not the not the first method, but like the second method where we kind of do breakdowns, then it would take 10 to the power of 17 operations, which is which is a lot. Um, but you know, in today's day, uh, it would only take 10 to the power of 10, which means that it's a million times faster. And as you can see, the power of um, creating more efficient algorithms are very important. As you can see, you can save a lot of time in uh, multiplying things. But yeah, and as the numbers grow, uh, as you can see, like as the, as the number that we wanted to multiply um, grew, like our efficiency became even faster and these efficient arithmetic techniques can save us a lot of time. But um, there are even more. Um, so I only talked about arithmetics and arithmetics are within the area of algebra. Um, but there are more things to math than just arithmetics and algebra. Um, some of the topics that came into my mind were um, polynomials, mod modular mathematics. Uh, there are compression algorithms, um, some probability. There are inequalities, like series of inequality equations. Um, and there are there's also optimization and there's like graph theory and there there's a lot more that um, I didn't list here, but especially the ones right here. Um, it's known to have a lot of NP problems and NP problems it, to explain it in a watered down sense is that there are no efficient algorithms for um, these topics yet. Um, there might be one, there might not be one. Um, that, that question actually is the P equals NP problem. So if you're also interested in that, um, you might want to read further on that. And so, yeah, the plot thickens. Like there is a need for uh, faster algorithms for every uh, mathematical thing out there. And researchers are still working on you know, finding more efficient algorithms. And yeah, so uh, if this topic in particular uh, interested you, um, Chapter one of this textbook, the, I, I, I actually first studied uh, this material through this textbook. Um, yeah, so you, uh, take, a, try, uh, take a look at the first chapter of this uh, yeah, textbook.